thanks for the support as a channel member, The Locker Room FM. Yep, Greek Cup final again today. Yeah, we're playing Powak. Yeah, they've beaten us the last two times they've played us. That's right. They are the one Greek team that have kind of got our number. In fact, bear with me a minute. Let me just run the intro. I've got some stuff I want to show. I may as well show you all. I've got some stuff I want to show you. I think Powak. Powak are the second team in Greece now. Olympiakos have fallen off the, fallen off the face of the earth. And welcome to part 83 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have the Greek Cup final against Powak. But before that, we're just going to have a little look at the state of Greek football. Because, of course, one of the elements of this save is we are trying to do a building a nation thing as well. With a view to eventually taking over as the manager of the Greece national team and doing international bits as well. As you can see, Jean van der Ch mm -mm. he's been in this job for years nearly 10 years but he is 64 retirement has got to be has got to be close 2028 what's that is that a euros year or a world cup year i think it's a euros year so fingers crossed greece we might be able to get the greek job soon because that then is stage two of our uh, our domination of greece and europe and the world um as you can see major clubs wise we are now the highest reputation club in greece olympiakos still considered second Ike, Powak, Panathinaikos. But that doesn't, I don't think that tells you the whole story. If we have a look at the Greek League, um, once again this year, it is, in fact, we need to look at the Championship group, don't we? Once again this year, it is Powak and Ike qualifying for the Champions League. Olympiakos having to make do with Europa League with a fourth place finish. And if we have a look at the past winners, um, you can see that's not that unusual in recent years. Sin in the five years since we dethroned Olympiakos and have become the dominant force in Greece, that's not the only change that's happened. We're also witnessing the gradual decline of Olympiakos. They had two second-place finishes, two third-place finishes, and now a fourth-place finish. And the, the, so this is the first time since way back when, since 2017-18. So first time in over 10 years they've not been in the Champions League. And they're, they're in free fall. They're not really spending money. Um, he says they've spent £37 million this year, but they did sell £29 million off a player. I was thinking mainly the year before, they only spent £4 million, only spending £10 million that year. They're, they're not really, I don't think they're necessarily being competitive. I think this is more an indication of they're selling off their best players and flailing a little bit, bringing up more options. I mean, this guy they've spent £8.5 million on is 31 years old. What are they, what are they doing? They've spent eight and a half million pounds on a guy who's never going to be any good for them they olympiakos have lost their mind who's this guy Thir another eight million on a 32 year old it's such short-term thinking and it's not even working another four million on a 32 year old what is going on at olympiakos um if we have a look at their competition history in the champions league you'll see that they did have their chance and it's not just the emergence of us that has caused them to bottle it. They've they've imploded at the same time because they were blazing the trail before us. We were following in their path. They had their Champions League second qualifying round defeat, then their Champions League playoff round defeat. Then they got into the group stage but finished bottom. But then the following year, they got into the first knockout round of the Champions League. This is the point where we entered things um, and they just, they've fallen down. They didn't get in via the playoff that year. They finished third in the group that year. Lost in playoff, lost in playoff, lost in playoff. They've not been in the Champions League group stages for three years. Now they're not in the competition at all. They've just fallen off completely. And while that's been going on, we've seen the rise of Powak. Um, Ike have been definitely in the mix as well. We'll look at Ike first. So Ike have had a third, a fourth, a, a second. Ike have not been too badly. They've obviously got into the Champions League as well, doing their one season this year, going straight into the group stage. Third place finish for them in Group D. Not a disaster. Um, and they're going to be in the qualifying rounds of the Champions League again this year. But it's Powak who are really benefiting from a, from some some exposure to the Champions League, I guess. Um, they made it to the first knockout round the season before last. They were stuck in the Europa League this year, just gone, but made it through to the second knockout round. Um, so they're doing quite well in Europe and are now investing the money that they're making in Europe. They spent, they had a net transfer spend of nine and a half million pounds this season just gone, including buying a player off of us. 
but they're not flinging it around, wasting it on old men, I don't think. There you go, 26 years old, 3.6 million. Um, okay, so he is 31. What is going on with these people? What are they doing? Uh, but this guy, 29, a little bit younger. They're all mad. They are mad. This guy, 28. So they're a little bit younger, I guess. They did manage to buy a youngster off of me, who's 19. So we've, we've got we've got a Greek youngster out there into the world, but they're not really using him. But it is Powak, I think, who are emerging and establishing themselves as our, as our main rivals. And that is shown by the fact that they're the team that beat us twice this season, both in the championship group, both home and away. Um, so they've got two defeats in a row against or two victories in a row against us. And now we face them in the Greek Cup, Greek Cup final as they try and take another step towards us. Powok are emerging as a half decent side. We might need to slip them a few players to try and to try and keep the progress going. But first, let's win the Greek Cup. You know, I want to help them out, but not that much. I'm not going to not going to give them too much of an advantage. So our team for the Greek Cup final, we're going with Tanessi in goal, a back four of Pezic, Michaelis, Criado and Kalapitas, Milo at the base of the midfield, Dominguez and Cordoba ahead of him, and then Sanchez, Carnavali, Lencina are the front three. Wondering where Duffy is? Duffy is injured. He, uh, he has a twisted ankle, so Duffy's going to be sitting this one out, meaning a start in a big game for Unai Dominguez, who... I still think he's going to go on to be a star for this team. There's there's always rumblings that 40 million was a lot to spend on him. I think I think he's still our record signing. I don't think we spent 40 million on anybody else. It was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a end of the transfer window. We've got loads of money left. Might as well, might as well buy him. Not panic buy, but there wasn't as much thought went into Unai Dominguez as there maybe has been to other players in recent years. But there was some logic attached to it as well. This was at the time when both Duffy and Cordoba were constantly being chased by Bundesliga and Premier League clubs, and it looked pretty sure that one of them was going to be leaving for 50, 60 million pounds and spending 40 million pounds to bring in their replacement and have him in the club in advance and get some continuity going made sense. Here we are two years later. Dominguez still cost us 40 million two years ago, but hasn't yet established himself as a first teamer because Duffy and Cordoba are still here. But this, you never know, this might be the summer. There's Premier League teams sniffing around Duffy again. He's 24 years old now. He's recently broken into the England team. I think there's going to come a point where Duffy decides he wants to go back to the Premier League and join a top team, join a Manchester United or a Liverpool. Um, so that might be this year, in which case Dominguez slots straight in alongside Cordoba, and I think we're okay. Um, there's nothing happening in this game. Lencina with a free kick. We've just gone to an attacking instruction to try and get something. I mean, as you can see, Powak just in full-on defensive mode. They've had two shots, missed them both. We've had more possession, more shots. We're just not really getting anything decent going either. It's been a long time since these players have played together. We've we've spent the whole of the championship group rotating the side. This 11 haven't all played at the same time since the Champions League. So I guess it's going to take a little bit of time for them to feel their way back in. But Kalapitas has just got his first goal of the season. It's a ridiculous one as well. And it couldn't happen to a nicer man. Valentinos Kalapitas, the man with the most marvellous moustache in football, has just scored a wonderful goal in the Greek Cup final. Look at that. Beauty from range. Forget the fact that the goalkeeper really messed it up the important thing is we've gone one nil up and it's through the man who's been here since the start Kalapitas, 26 years old now 12 caps for greece more importantly over 250 games in all competitions for us he's he, this is his ninth season we learned in the twitch save this year that 10 years isn't enough to get a testimonial you do need to be over 30 as well but well, at least we know we're going to have a man if we can keep him around we're going to have a man who does get a testimonial at some point and that is always nice to see. If you want to you want to see those discussions in more depth over on Twitch, of course, as you know, I stream on Twitch four nights a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. The link is down in the description below. Come and join me over there. I'm streaming tonight. It's a lot of fun. You should come and check it out. Um, right, final change we're going to bring... Oh, we haven't got German on the bench. What is wrong with German? We'll bring Pepe on then, I guess. There must be a reason German's not down there. I mean, I can't imagine a scenario where I didn't pick my own bench. <laughs> What, what kind of idiot wouldn't pick their own bench in a video? Um, cross comes in from Milo, header from Dave, and it goes just over. Um, and that, I imagine, is likely to be one of the final chances of the game because Powak still showing absolutely no ambition 
to get back into this game. They weren't able to. We've done back-to-back -back doubles. And I think, off the back of the conversation we had in yesterday's video, let me know what you think down in the comments. That might be the last Greek Cup game I show you in the series because we've now won it two years in a row. Um, unless Powark really do push on and start being proper competitors for us. I mean, I know that was quite a tight game, but we've won the league five years in a row. We've won the cup two years in a row now and three years out of six, I think we've won the cup. If you don't want to see these cup finals anymore, let me know and we can just really focus in on the Champions League. And I'm kind of half hoping that we'll be able to switch the focus even more. If we can fo focus on the Champions League with Apollon and international football with Greece, they are in the Euros. We either need an absolutely pathetic performance and him getting sacked or a really good performance so he gets offered a better job or just decides I'm going to quit on a high and retire. But I am very much hoping that this is the summer where I get to become Greek national team manager. And of course, we'll find out about that in the transfer special, which will be coming up tomorrow. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.